I decided to make this video because in the past year, Thunderbird has been on the news quite often thanks to the work and announcements we've been releasing. Unfortunately, some outlets have been misreading our press release or highlighting some negative aspects of Thunderbird that are not entirely true. Being the Thunderbird product design manager, I have some good insights about what's happening and where things are going and I wanted to create a comprehensive overview of what we're doing alongside some background information to paint a more complete picture of where Thunderbird is headed and why some of the things we're doing might seem controversial. And at the end, I will answer the always recurring question of why does Thunderbird look so old and why does it take so long to change? Thunderbird is a desktop email client originally built by Mozilla, but now kinda independent, but not really. I'll touch upon this a bit later. Thunderbird has been around for 20 years, with its first release dating back to the 28th of July 2003. It dramatically grew beyond its original purpose throughout the years, and as of today, Thunderbird offers address book support, calendar chat, tasks, alongside hundreds of features that you probably never heard of or even knew it had. It's now new that Thunderbird looks and feels dated, clunky, unwelcoming, and in general, it just looks old. Throughout this video, we will analyze how we got to this point, what's our plan to get out of this hole and highlight the difficulties and the necessary steps we need to go through in order to make this happen. How is Thunderbird made? Thunderbird is literally a bunch of code running on top of Firefox. This is a simplistic explanation, but it's pretty accurate. Thunderbird uses Firefox as its base architecture, leveraging all the good stuff coming from within, things like cross-platform support, the Gecko web renderer, the SpiderMonkey JavaScript compiler, and so on. In doing so, Thunderbird can tag along Firefox for their release cycle, inherit security patches, benefit from extension support, and much more. Thunderbird is literally a subfolder inside the Firefox repository. All the tabs and sections you see are just browser tabs with a custom user interface. Obviously, there's much more complexity to it, including a lot of C++, JavaScript, CSS, and XHTML to ensure everything works properly, but using a solid base architecture like Firefox is the perfect starting point. Unfortunately, this approach doesn't come without a hefty cost. Keep in mind that Thunderbird is currently being actively developed by a bit more than a dozen developers, while Firefox has hundreds of developers constantly changing and improving things on a daily basis. So you can imagine how many times per week things suddenly break in Thunderbird because a C++ interface was renamed, or an API was deprecated, or a building library was upgraded. Keeping up with the upstream changes is not a simple task, and in some occasions, it takes up most of our days. This is one of the many reasons why Thunderbird is on a yearly release schedule, sticking exclusively to ESR releases, extended support releases, while Firefox releases monthly. Even though Thunderbird also offers daily alpha and monthly beta releases, those are prone to breakages. So if you ever wonder why the hell the Thunderbird developers don't know how to count, releasing version 78, then 102, then 115 once a year, that's the reason. We follow the Firefox release numbers, and even though we actually release monthly versions like 103, 104, 105, etc., we don't advertise them as much and we keep them in the beta channel, the technical debt. Throughout the years, the focus of Mozilla shifted a lot, investing less and less resources into the development of Thunderbird, until on the 6th of July 2012, the Mozilla Foundation announced that they will no longer be focused on innovations for Thunderbird, and that the future Thunderbird development will be transitions to a community-driven model. This meant that community members and external contributors will be in charge of developing and supporting Thunderbird, without much oversight other than some sporadic contributions from some Firefox developers during their spare time. This decision was both a blessing and a curse for Thunderbird. A blessing because that sparked the fire of support and contributions inside the community, allowing passionate contributors to submit code and improve Thunderbird in areas they cared about. 
many features and flexibility in terms of support and customization were introduced because a lot of community members started sharing and proposing their ideas to improve Thunderbird. The community grew and the project became a solid example of real software democracy occurs because there was no oversight, no decision-making process, no roadmap, no vision, and all other things that are absolutely vital for the success of a software. Thunderbird was being developed by random contributors based on their personal preferences. Code inconsistencies, bad user experience and UI solutions, questionable quality code started to pour into Thunderbird. Moreover, the lack of constant upstream synchronization with Firefox caused the inability to build and release Thunderbird for months. The more time was passing without a proper development structure, the more difficult it became to keep up with the technology changes, innovations and improvements from competitors, as well as doing a simple release on time, contributing to the idea that Thunderbird was dead. The interface debt. Little disclaimer, this section will be a bit emotionally charged because it's my realm of expertise and misconceptions and wrong assumptions in the UI and UX fields are just driving me insane. User interface and user experience are not based on personal preferences, but that's exactly what happened to Thunderbird. Without a proper organization behind it, without guidelines, development oversight, or full-time employees with specific expertise, the interface of Thunderbird has been bastardized throughout the years to accommodate all the requests and wishes from community members. The most common approach was to be adding whatever random new feature inside a sub-menu of a sub-menu. Super tight and unreadable elements were the default. Inconsistent visual styles, random colors, comically bad UX decisions of opening a dialogue within a dialogue within a dialogue just to ask the user for confirmation are still polluting the interface as of today. The fact that many long-term contributors of Thunderbird find the interface optimal and efficient as if Windows 95 was the pinnacle of UX design didn't help. Thunderbird was a project without designers, without a cohesive vision nor direction, resulting in a melting pot of inconsistent solutions. Thunderbird is visually outdated and lacks behind all its competitors. You can obviously argue that an interface is very personal and many users prefer what is currently available, but that doesn't remove the fact that new generations are used and exposed to a completely different visual language. And if Thunderbird doesn't adapt, innovate and accommodate different needs for different people, it's destined to die from a slow bleeding of users. The community. Based on what I just said, you might think that I hate the Thunderbird community. That couldn't be more wrong. The Thunderbird community is what kept Thunderbird alive across these years. Millions of active users, contributors, donors, supporters have dedicated hours and hours of their free time in order to guarantee a usable and useful tool for many, and they did a darn good job. All the problems that Thunderbird is currently facing don't come from the community. The core of every problem is, as you might already have figured out, the lack of a solid leadership and vision in the past. The community simply responded and adapted to the scenario they found, and they tried to make the best of it. Thunderbird is still alive and kicking, mostly thanks to the passion and commitment of many community members, and for that we're absolutely grateful. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a problem here. Due to how the project was defined by Mozilla back in 2012, the community was in charge of Thunderbird. Today, Thunderbird is owned by MZLA Technology, a subsidiary of Mozilla Foundation, and it's actively developed and maintained by a group of paid employees. We have a proper organization, a roadmap, and people in charge of making decisions and defining directions. This shift, which happened slowly between 2017 and 2020, was a bit of a shock for our community since now additions or changes need to be approved by core developers and designers. A stricter roadmap and list of features gets the priority during every release cycle, and external contributions are rejected if they're not up to the standard of quality and visual direction of the project. This sudden shift in the way that Thunderbird is handled and developed created a feeling of walled garden, causing many community members to feel rejected or alienated by a project they spent hours on. This is absolutely understandable, but it was necessary, changing the direction and perception. At Thunderbird, we strive to remain open, welcoming and collaborative as much as possible. 
We constantly advocate for an open process, starting from the initial roadmap ideas, releasing early mockups and changes to our community, as well as keeping our entire source code open and accessible. Even though we're very upfront and honest about the direction of the project, the decision-making process happens during internal meetings, and it's driven by the people in charge, like a normal company. The lead developer, lead designer, project and product manager, senior engineers, and so on, they're those who make the final decisions. We're always listening and incorporate the feedback from the community, and we try to balance what we know it's needed with what the users and external contributors want, but as per usual, we can't make everybody happy. The toughest thing to do is changing the perception that we, the core developers, don't care about the community, and we just do things to upset them or change things just because it's trendy. That couldn't be more wrong. The current objective. The Thunderbird project is undergoing a massive rework from the ground up to get rid of all the technical debt and interface debt accumulated over the past 10 years. This is not an easy task, but it's necessary to allow us to guarantee the sustainability of the project for the next 20 years. Simply adding stuff on top of a crumbling architecture is not sustainable, and we can't keep ignoring it. Throughout the next three years, the Thunderbird project is aiming at this primary objective. First, make the code base leaner and more reliable. Rewrite ancient code, remove technical debt. Second, rebuild the interface from scratch to create a consistent design system, as well as developing and maintaining an adaptable and extremely customizable user interface. And third, switch to a monthly release schedule. Inside those objectives, there are hundreds of very large steps that need to happen, and achieving everything will require a lot of time and resources. Why does it take so damn long to change anything? Thunderbird released a new version and it still looks the same, quote by many users. Indeed, it takes so damn long to update anything. But why? Because of all the reasons I explained before, like technical debt, interface debt, upstream breakages, and so on. Think about Thunderbirds as an enormous Lego tower in which you realize that the centerpiece is using the wrong shape. But if you replace the centerpiece, the whole tower crumbles. So you need to first start slowly removing the blocks above to not make the rest of the tower crumble. And once you reach that centerpiece, replace it and then add back the pieces you removed with a slightly different piece because the original pieces don't fit anymore. And then halfway through you realize someone used some glue to stick two broken pieces together. Thunderbird is a monolithic application that has been developed by thousands of people across 20 years, so changing anything requires a lot of time and careful consideration. The future of Thunderbird and what to expect. We're almost at the end of this analysis, so better end it up on a positive note, and indeed the future looks brighter than ever. Thunderbird, it's pretty well sustainable. With a healthy donation flow, more services coming out to increase the revenue stream, and an ever-growing team of developers and designers bringing their expertise in the mix. The technical debt is slowly abandoning the source code, thanks to the outstanding work of many core developers which are implementing modern paradigms, documenting a consistent coding style, and removing the crusty old code that only creates problems. Improvements to the user interface and user experience are going to continue for the next two years, with the objective of creating an interface that can adapt to everyone's needs. A user interface that looks and feels modern is getting implemented, aiming at offering a simple and clean interface for new users, as well as the implementation of more customizable options with a flexible and adaptable interface to allow old users to maintain the familiarity they love. A renowned attention to usability and accessibility is now part of the daily development process, guaranteeing easy discoverability of all the powerful features, as well as full compatibility with assistive technologies to make Thunderbird usable by everyone. A constant addition of new features that some of our competitors had for years, as well as the creation of some amazing and innovative solutions that will improve everyone's experience. Everything, as usual, wrapped around an open and ethical process with a constant attention to our community and a renowned passion to innovate and grow to make Thunderbird the best personal communication application out there.